Hello and welcome to this video on Smart Connector by Schneider Electric. In this video we will be demonstrating how to use the EWS RESTful Gateway to consume data that is within the Schneider Electric ecosystem by other applications. The default assembly provided with Smart Connector for use with the EWS RESTful Gateway is named EWS.REST Extensions. This is the assembly that will be covered in this video. If you are using another assembly, please consult that extensions documentation for configuration options. The EWS RESTful Gateway is designed to allow easy access to EcoStructure data for use in other applications. The EWS RESTful Gateway can easily get data from Smart Connector EWS servers, EcoStructure Building Operation servers, or generic EWS servers. To configure a REST endpoint, start by opening the Smart Connector portal. The Smart Connector portal can be found by opening a browser and typing in localhost colon 8082. If there is an error, please see the Smart Connector install video to make sure the Smart Connector service was installed correctly. Once you are logged in, click on the Configurations Endpoint menu option. Select the Endpoint Configuration page. Select the EWS.REST Extensions Assembly and click Next. On the next page, there are three data providers to choose from. If you want data from a Smart Connector EWS server, select the Mongoose EWS REST provider. For data from an EcoStructure Building Operations server, select the SBO EWS REST provider. If you want data from a server that has EcoStructure Web Services functionality, for example, Data Expert and Power Monitoring Expert, select the SOAP EWS REST provider. To start endpoint configuration, click on the endpoint configuration for the REST endpoint you are working on. There you need to set the schema, host, port, and an optional base route. The scheme is either HTTP or HTTPS. HTTPS is recommended for security reasons. The host is the endpoint that will be used. For example, this could be an IP address, DNS address, or host name. The port is the HTTP or HTTPS port that will be used for the program. The base route is an optional setting that sets a prefix route which occurs before the standard routes. In general, this will be empty. Now open the HTTP configuration node. Here you can set the access token expire time, the token endpoint path, whether to serve Swagger metadata, the name of the endpoint, and the cache tenant ID. The access token expire time span minutes defines how long the authorization bearer token is usable before a new token will be required. Token endpoint path is the route used to get the bearer token. The option to serve Swagger metadata is used for debugging and test purposes. This will not be covered in this video. The name field of the settings controls what the name of the endpoint will be when it is looked at in the debugger. The cache tenant ID is the ID of a space in the in-memory cache allocated to the data provider. The next setting is the throttling policy settings. Throttling limits the amount of requests that the endpoint will accept. Several different policies can be set up to limit how many requests come in during a time frame. An empty or zero value will leave the endpoint unrestricted. There is an option for whitelisting IP addresses such that they don't count against the throttling limit. Another option is for having different levels of throttling using API keys. A unique key can be assigned to a class of clients. The clients would then include their key in the authorization token header. The same options for general throttling can be used in the API key overrides. Overrides for the base throttling rate can be created based on a given IP address also. There are one or two settings left under the HTTP configuration tab. These settings are dependent on what data provider you chose. For the Mongoose EWS REST provider, the settings we did not discuss was the EWS server ID. This is the ID of the Smart Connector EWS server that will serve as a data source. This value can be obtained from the EWS server detail page. If you're using the SBO EWS REST provider, then you will have the server domain and the server address options in the HTTP configuration. The server domain is the domain that the user credentials used to connect to this ecostructure building operation are in. The server address should be set to the HTTP endpoint for the ecostructure building operation server. This should be the IP address and the port. 
Both of these settings are exactly the same as if you were to log into EcoStructure building operation from a workstation or web station. If you are using the SOAP EWS REST provider, then you must enter the full SOAP endpoint for the EWS server, which will be used as the data source. After you have set all the settings, click on the validate button. The endpoint configuration valid message should appear if everything is correct. Finally, to start the endpoint, click the start button.